Get the latest Impact Podcast right into your inbox each week. Subscribe by entering your email address at impactpodcast.com to make sure you never miss an interview. This edition of the Impact Podcast is brought to you by ERI. ERI has a mission to protect people, the planet, and your privacy, and is the largest fully integrated IT and electronics asset disposition provider and cybersecurity-focused hardware destruction company in the United States, and maybe even the world. For more information on how ERI can help your business properly dispose of outdated electronic hardware devices, please visit eridirect.com. This episode of the Impact Podcast is brought to you by Closed Loop Partners. Closed Loop Partners is a leading circular economy investor in the United States with an extensive network of Fortune 500 corporate investors, family offices, institutional investors, industry experts, and impact partners. Closed Loop's platform spans the arc of capital from venture capital to private equity, bridging gaps, and fostering synergies to scale the circular economy. To find Closed Loop Partners, please go to www.closedlooppartners.com. Welcome to another edition of the Impact Podcast. I'm John Shigarian. I'm so excited to have with us today, Kelsey Duffy. She's a Senior Vice President at Walker & Dunlap. Welcome to the Impact Podcast, Kelsey. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. You know, Kelsey, before we get talking about all the important work in ESG and sustainability that you're doing with your colleagues at Walter Dunlop, can you please share a little bit about your story? Where'd you grow up and how'd you get on this fascinating and wonderful and important journey? Yes, I um, thank you. I'm originally from uh, New Orleans, Louisiana, but I have not lived there for many years. I went to boarding school for high school. Um, kind of on the um, on the northeast in the northeast, and I went to Philly for college, so further northeast. Um, and I got my first job out of college as a marketing job in Washington D.C. And um, I did. I quickly realized marketing wasn't for me. Um, and I landed. I will say landed because it was kind of through a friend, um, which is how many jobs I know come about um, at a commercial real estate firm, Walker and Dunlop, in 2012. So um, I, I I kind of fell into the the industry, which is something I, I hope to touch on a little bit today, how it's a little bit of an unknown industry for many, um, especially yeah. women and minorities today. Um, so I, I lucked into this role, I would say, and I, I joined the investor relations team in 2015 and have been in that role for eight years now or so. Um, and the ESG or sustainability portion of my role came about somewhat organically, I would say, over the past five years. So what about Walker and Dunlop, what struck me and why I've stayed there for here for 12 years is just the the commitment to the people that we have. And the company as a whole is definitely fully invested in making meaningful impact in the industry. But I will say, you know, when I first joined in for several years, we weren't really doing a great job communicating that. And as ESG in general, it just became a more important topic. And a lot of our shareholders were asking about it. And, and you know, we didn't have the right disclosures and, um, you know, communications in place, but we were doing everything right. So that's kind of how my role uh, started started getting shaped in the, in, you know, on the ESG side of investor relations. So we're a publicly traded company, but we're a little bit unique, I would say, in today's world because we're kind of a family-owned public company, if that makes sense. Our CEO is Willie Walker, so Walker and Dunlop. His grandfather started the company in 1937. Wow. So, yes, I know. very, it, And it really, it's it shapes our culture that we're a family owned, but public, public company. Yeah. Um, and, and, and if that just speaks to kind of how people are family owned companies just kind of tend to feel like a family and, and that's how Walker and Dunlop is. And that's what has struck me is just the investment in our people. And that has been at the core of our ESG program and, and, and hopefully we'll get to talk more about it, but that that's kind of how our ESG program started was really with our people and, and better communicating that. And I've really enjoyed building out, you know, the formal formality of our ESG program, I guess, over the past five years from what we were already doing for, I would say, decades. Uh, were, you know, were you very familiar with that acronym and with sustainability work prior to 2015? No. And to be honest, 
I don't ESG. A lot of companies are moving away from it, as you well know, right? Mm. Because not just because it's becoming politicized, um, but because employees don't connect with it as easily as they do if you say impact or sustainability or corporate yes. responsibility. So I find even internally, you know, in presentations I'm writing ESG, parentheses, environmental, social governance, I don't, I want everyone to understand, um, you know, what it is. And um, so, no, it's taken a while. And I will say from an employee perspective, the governance for the governance part always is a little, it's not as important to, to our employees, yeah. but it is important to our shareholders sure. um, as a public company. So um, ESG, I would say. In 2015, it was a new concept, but what has been interesting to me is that it's ever changing. So every year, while I feel like I know more, I feel like I'm still drinking out of a fire hose because there's just so much that goes into the E, the simple acronym, right? It's so, sure. <laughs> so, so big. And it's also ever changing right now yes. is time where it's changing so much. Yes, so, exactly. Um, it's a, it's a full-time job just keeping up with that and um, and then, you know, we have the various stakeholders as a public company with our shareholders, which is part, a large part of my job, obviously. But then, you know, your employees, your your vendors, your partners and everything else. So um, for, for to share, I love how you term it. It's a family run company, but it's publicly traded. But it's but the culture is family, which I, it just is wonderful. And especially to have a family name member as a CEO still is really uh, shows Tremendous continuity and cultural continuity, et cetera. Before we get talking about all the great work you and your colleagues are doing in the ESG at Walker and Dunlap, can you share a little bit about Walker and Dunlap? How big is it and how many people are there and what exactly is the is the main core of your business? Sure. Yes, that's a great question because it's not a household name. So we are a commercial real estate finance company. We are one of the largest providers of, of capital, I would say, to the commercial real estate industry, meaning we finance, you know, apartment buildings, office buildings, um, retail centers, anything like that, though primarily our focus is on multifamily. Um, and we like to say that we are uh, building communities. So our capital is going towards, you know, financing where people live, where they work, where they shop. And, um, you know, that that puts our business in every aspect of the community across the United States. Um, so we have about 1,500 employees, 50 or so offices throughout the country. We're headquartered in DC, though I'm in Dallas, as we discussed. Um, and um, so, yeah, it, it, it's grown though. I mean, when I joined in 2012, we probably had 250 employees. Um, so I, we've had pretty dramatic growth um, and, done very well, you know, from a stock price appreciation perspective and all those things. We're, we're a growth-driven company, but also a people-driven company. So I think that combination has worked well for us. Historically, um, the, the, the the commercial real estate industry hasn't been well known for all their work in ESG. Can you explain why you've taken, why Walker and Dunlap has taken, and how you've taken a leadership position with regards to commercial real estate and, e and, the, and the implementation and execution of good ESG work? Yes, definitely. So, I mean, like I said, we're one of the largest multifamily and commercial real estate lenders in the country, right. um, and we are using that leadership position to, I mean... Like I said, we're not a household name, but if you're in the industry, you know who we are. And that is, you know, that speaks a lot because it's a huge, it's a huge industry. Um, and we have been very focused on it, certain internal efforts, but also efforts throughout the industry. So internally, you know, we have set goals on increasing diversity um, and among our leadership, among our entry level, kind of throughout the organization. But then Across the industry, we have we have established a partnership. It's called CRE United, so Commercial Real Estate United, um, with various stakeholders in the industry. Some household names for sure, like Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, KKR, Kane Anderson, um, big names. And really, the goal is to um, just open channels for minorities and women in the industry because. 
our our company is, has done a great job diversifying. I think we're 35% women, um, 65% men. And that that's probably in line with the industry. But when you look at the ownership level of commercial real estate, where the real wealth is, if you I mean, really, if you want to own commercial real estate properties and, and run, a, run a business, it's only 4% or 5%, I think, women and minorities. So the goal is to really open doors and, and, and build. It, it's hard to break in, right? It's a I don't want to say it's an old boys club, but it, it's it's an industry that has been around for a long time and, and breaking in can be tough. So the goal of Sierra United is to break down those barriers and build networking opportunities, connections, but also access to capital. There's real capital coming to these um, minority owned and women owned businesses through through the partnership. And it's been super successful so far, but more exciting to see you know what's to come because it's still relatively new. So historically, you're saying historically as as an industry as a whole as, as the CRE industry goes minorities and women have been marginalized and, and now you're trying to create a bigger tent and bring more in into the industry correct yes Ready? that's the goal um yes that's wonderful um so explain a little bit you know Kelsey and for our listeners and viewers we've got Kelsey Duffy with us she's a senior vice president of Walker and Dunlop you know, to find Kelsey and her colleagues at Walker Dunlop, you could go to www.walkerdunlop, D-U-N-L-O-P.com, walkerdunlop.com. Talk a little bit about ESG. You know, ESG is fa fascinating, as you say, as an acronym, not only because of the ever-changing nature of it and the velocity that has picked up just in the last five or so years in, uh, in North America and around the world, frankly speaking, but it could be this narrow or this wide, depending on... Who is interpreting it and who needs to ex execute on it? How do you look at ESG at Walker Dunlap, both internally and externally, in terms of how you like to go about executing and and uh, and and making a successful ESG program? Yeah, that's a great question because I agree it can be it's different for every company. Sure. And for us, I mean, like I said, we are focused on our people. They're at the core of everything we do. They're they're how how we are successful. We also look at our operations as, you know, part of our ESG because we're financing communities and that I think our that gives our employees a purpose. So that is important to us as well. And then we like I said, we're also using our leadership position to uh create change in the industry. So I think those three pillars are very important to us, but it, it all goes back to the people. And what I've noticed about companies and looking at so many companies' ESG programs is that ESG programs and what companies stand for happen very organically. So for us, mm -hmm. when I started looking at you know, if you just write wrote down what what is Walker and Dunlop doing, you know, back in 2012, that could be classified as ESG. It was centered around our people and retention and training and leadership opportunities and wellness benefits and everything that that went into creating a happy, healthy, you know, productive employee. So that's been our focus. And I think for the financial services industry, that is kind of, you know, human capital is, is a big, important pillar of your of your ESG program. Sure. But it, it's true for many companies. When you start to look at what they stand for, you're like, oh, that makes sense. It's not a reach. Um, so, you know, while we do have a very robust and I would say impressive um, environmental program for a company of our size and in our industry, that was almost a secondary kind of par portion of our it came it came after i think um you know we with after the people and um we're, we've been working hard on that but that's something that you know we've invested more time and resources and it didn't happen as naturally for us so i don't know if that fully answered your question yeah, it makes but sense you're focused yeah. on the people you're focused on the human capital aspect of it you're obviously environmental is part of it but your focus is on human you know i do so, so many of these uh, interviews and get to meet so many cool people like you, Kelsey, that are doing important things like Walker Dunlop. And like you said, it's a fascinating fine line and balancing act. And culturally speaking, different companies to choose different elements and and, right. and aspects. But still, if everyone's making an impact, we're, we're, we're all trying to just be better. Right. Exactly. No, that's right. And, and you're like you said, every company finds their niche and, and does right. the best they can in that space. And so, yeah, I agree with what you said. 
On the human capital side, how do you go about it? Like, do you have a, a certain way that you go about creating a bigger tent and, and you know, overtly creating a bigger tent to, to really make an impact inside of Walker Dunlap? Yeah, we've invested a lot of resources in that. Um, I think employee engagement is super important to us. And um, our, our um, you know, HR team has done a lot of work, especially since in the pre post-COVID yeah. era, we have, like I said, 50 offices. And then with remote work, it's how do you keep everyone connected and sure. feel like they're, yeah, like part of this, you know, it, you as we've grown, we still want it to feel like that family company that I, you know, I joined when there were 200 employees. So um, we've, you know, we have listening sessions, we have amazing ERGs. I think we have 11 at this point and their particip participation in them for, you know, a 1500 person company. That's pretty great. Um, you know, great participation and, um, a lot of engagement and that gives people a space at Walker and Dunlop just to feel, um, to connect with people and, and a safe space to, 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 um, to connect with others. I would say, you know, outside of your normal, your normal work, work day, um, and then from the DEI perspective, I think we've really been a leader there. We have a, a full DEI team um, and we're focused on, I would say, primarily, our, we, we do have quantitative goals around um, bringing up um, women and minorities in management positions and among the top earners at the company. Our CEO thought that was important. You know, we want to get, we want to get women and minorities at those people, at those levels, making the most money, not just, you know, even out the, the workforce, if you will, mm. but it takes a while to kind of have that movement through your workforce. So we're focused on entry level. Uh, we have a lot of partnerships with historically black colleges and universities. We have intern programs that start as young as high school. And I've had several interns come through my department. Um, and then, you know, the hope is that we hire them and, and they, they move up from analysts to, you know, just like I did, really, I started as an assistant and here I am today. So um, I think the company is great for that. And, and we're working kind of at the bottom levels and up, but we have goals across the, the space. But I think engagement since 2020 has been a huge focus for us. And look, it takes a lot of resources and effort um, in a dispersed environment like we have, but it pays off because you, you want people to feel connected or else they're not gonna, you know, they're not gonna feel like they wanna stay. And I think that's what we've done a great job with here at Walker and Dunlop. How do you, how do you overcome the, the, the woman issue? Like my wife was a commercial real estate broker way, I wanna say oh, wow. yeah, that's... About 30, 30 years ago. 30, yeah, 30 yeah. Years ago. That's, you know, and that's, so that was very, very different back then in Los Angeles, on the West side of Los Angeles. How do you, on, the, on, on that part of it, um, uh, how do you get more women involved? What has historically been a male dominated industry? Yeah. And, and yes, that is a great question. And that's for, with our recruiting efforts. I mean, we're always looking for top talent that are women, but like you said, there, there are a few. So yes, you can hire, you know, the best female teams that are established, but it's really about creating that lower level of, you know, entry level. They start in our underwriting analyst program and move up. And I have several friends who are now, you know, the bro the brokers themselves and, um, you know, women, sorry, women friends yeah. at Walker and Dunlop who had that exact path. And right. they are, they are taking it upon themselves to mentor and sponsor other women because it's important to women in the industry to bring more women in. And, um, one thing that's interesting is that it's not commercial real estate. Very few colleges have a major of commercial real estate for just their normal, you know, unless you're in business school. Um, so it's it's a lot of educating people about the profession and 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 what the opportunities are in the industry, of which there are so many. Um, and I think sponsorship and mentorship among women. We we at Walker Dunlop have a great um, we have a great women's group, but within that we have sponsorship and mentorship programs um, that have been great. I've participated in and um, building those connections is helpful. And then also just building an environment, and this is upon every company, especially in commercial real estate, building an environment where women want to stay. You know, I have two kids and I look, I'm not a broker myself, but I, I still, I'm in a male dominated kind of finance area of the, of the industry. And um, I feel like Halloween was yesterday, right? I wasn't at work the whole day yesterday because there was, and, right. and just creating that space where not just women, but all parents and, yeah. and you know, any, a caregiver role can feel like they have that flexibility and that makes women want to stay. If, if it's right. 
wrote, I mean, I, your wife doing it 30 years ago was a completely different environment. I think most companies have adapted, but it's still a tough industry. Um, so we're getting there, but we have work to do. You know, do you every year, do you uh, create and put together an impact report? We do. Yes, we have a very robust. Uh, we do. We do that. Um, we also have a, a task force for climate on climate for fin- climate related financial disclosures. You might know that TCFD. It's more of an environmental focused report. We're proud of that as well. But um, we work very hard on our ESG report. And um, I does think that come out. What part of it? So is- we just really not just we released it pretty much every summer. Okay. So for 2022, we release it in the summer. We'll do the same in 20, summer 2023 um and yeah it's a great document and so and so then that lives on walkerdunlop.com in perpetuity it does. got it got it so what are, what do you you know you're publicly traded so i know you're limited in what you could say but what projects and initiatives are you really excited about in the coming years ahead that is a good question because we are actually meeting with our board of directors next week about our uh, strategy for all things, including ESG. We're going to, you know, ESG has a has a has a place in that discussion. So, um, I would say, and this is a struggle for many companies, or not a struggle, just part of the ESG journey is getting um, ESG to be completely integrated into our business operations. And like I said, what our business itself is very ESG oriented. We have an, an incredible afforda- affordable housing platform. Um, we, in fact, have you know equity ownership in, in, in affordable housing uh, properties and, and an ar- a whole arm of our business dedicating to preserving and developing affordable housing. So that's amazing. We're, you know, the, the top green, um, green Fannie Mae lender. So we help finance properties that are, you know, making green um, upgrades and becoming more sustainable. So we're proud of that. But, but integrating ESG into kind of every area of our, of our business is, has taken time. And that's, for the next two to three years, I would say um, just just to ensure that ESG is part of our business decision making process across the board um, will be important. And 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 always just thinking back to our to our people and you know our our mission of of right. financing communities, but also creating change in the industry. And I think if we keep going back to that as we um, integrated into our, you know, business development processes and our, um, you know, even some of our business travel processes, we haven't quite gotten there yet, but things like that, um, that that's the longer term goal. So, so I would say keyword is integration and, and, and getting more fully integrated. And as we know, ESG and sustainability, there's no finish line. It's a journey. A hundred percent. The yes. journey, the <laughs> journey just continues, and that's wonderful. And uh, that's just it's so it's just so great to hear what you're doing and how you're really uh, evolving uh, an industry as a whole in a leadership role as a uh, on an industry that really needed to be evolved in a, in a, in, a, in a better way. Yes, agreed. I think we're getting there, and I think I think. While I do believe our company is a leader, I, we have great partners and we a lot of other larger peers like ourselves are equally focused on everything we've discussed. So I think we're getting there and that's very exciting. And I like I, you know, like I, you just said, I want to see it through to the end, but there is no end. It's just really? always going to hopefully be getting better and better. And that's, you know, exciting in itself. Kelsey, for inspiration, do you, you know, since benchmarking your own industry would be sort of. um you know, not that exciting at this point, uh, historically speaking, let's just say, where do you look for inspiration and benchmarking on ESG and who's doing it right? And where, what other things that they're doing that you could bring into both uh, Walker and Dunlop and into your initiatives and in, in industry as a whole? Yes. Oh my God. That I love, I love to do that. And like listening to some of the speakers you've had on your podcast. And um, I, I look at a lot of our bigger competitors um, JLL, for example, it, it's more of a household name, I would say. They, sure. um, they're they doing a great job on their environmental piece of their business. And like, f- for an example, full integration is they offer, you know, advisory services on environmental um, on environmental um, issues for, for property owners, which, look, that's something like we aspire to as, as a company. They're, you know, they have like, I think, 50,000 employees compared to our 1,500. But 
I look at them and um, I, you know, I recently listened to the head of sustainability at Clorox speak, and that was incredibly inspiring. They have just complete integration, you know, with all of the development of their packaging all the way down to, you know, how a consumer views and handles the product and what they do with it. Um, so just the complete integration in their business was incredible it's obviously a completely different industry but it's great to look at companies like that and just see what they're doing and um it's it's inspiring to see and i just love seeing that across every industry the the focus on esg and and like we discussed earlier in different facets right like for clorox it's largely environmental and i'm sure you know they have a great human capital management program as well but um, just seeing every company kind of make a difference in its own unique way is very inspiring. And, and, you know, I take little tidbits back and try to incorporate them where I can into Walker and Dunlop. Well, that's wonderful. Kelsey, thank you so much for your time today, for your wisdom and for your <laughs> vision on what you're doing with your colleagues at Walker and Dunlop for, for our listeners and viewers to find Kelsey and her colleagues and find Walker Dunlop's ESG report. Please go to www.walkerdunlop, D-U-N-L-O-P. Dot com. Kelsey Duffy, thanks for spending time with us today. And thank you for making the world a better place. Thank you for having me. This has been great. This edition of the Impact Podcast is brought to you by Engage. Engage is a digital booking platform revolutionizing the talent booking industry. With thousands of athletes, celebrities, entrepreneurs, and business leaders, Engage is the go-to spot for booking talent, for speeches, custom experiences, live streams, and much more. For more information on Engage or to book talent today, visit letsengage.com. This edition of the Impact Podcast is brought to you by ERI. ERI has a mission to protect people, the planet, and your privacy and is the largest fully integrated IT and electronics asset disposition provider and cybersecurity-focused hardware destruction company in the United States and maybe even the world. For more information on how ERI can help your business properly dispose of outdated electronic hardware devices, please visit eridirect.com.